Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the Blue Balloon and I'm Sam and I'm here to take all your blues away. So I posted a video 10 reasons why I hate people. Go check it out if you haven't. Now a person who hates people is bound to also hate falling in love, right? So today we're going to be doing 10 reasons why I absolutely hate falling in love. Okay, so number one, experiencing love requires you to talk to people. Like, come on, are you kidding me right now? Like, why can't I just put on my spectacles and read my novel and, you know, be this mysterious character whom all hot, dashing, cute, charming guys approach? But no, love has too many demands. Okay, so now let's say hypothetically. Hypothetically, okay, we fell in love, okay? So now what? Now number two... We have to show emotion. Like, okay, I get it. Showing emotions is cool. But either I have a resting bitch face or I'm in a cranky mood or I'm happy but my smile doesn't look like a smile. Like, it's like someone would give me something and my inner self would be absolutely screaming and crying and jumping but outside I would just be like, Thank you. How do people actually show emotions? Number three, your life is in a Bollywood movie or rom-com novel. You know, like the type of guys you read about in novels? They don't exist. And somehow in movies, people always end up together, happily ever after. Like, how even? You don't have a Jai in your life who's going to run to the airport just so that he can confess his love for you. Or a Rahul for your Meenama who will fight Dakus for you. Or an own to your beautiful Shanti who will literally sacrifice his life for you and reborn just to avenge your death. Or an Aditya who will listen to your endless nonsense and make you love anything you can't even smile. Ew, that sounds like a quote my 13 year old self would say. You won't have a gym to your Pam, you know, somebody who can be your prank partner and like, you get the point, right? Number 4. Your grades drop, your self-respect drops and your crush can come dignity also drops. You keep texting first even after being left on red a gazillion times. You keep posting stories which are targeted specifically towards your crush. Ew, embarrassing. You keep trying to give subtle hints despite clearly being ignored. You cannot focus on studies because your brain is busy creating fictional never-to-happen scenarios. Basically, you've, you've lost it. Number 5. You become crazy. Like, what do you mean I'm checking a guy's profile picture and status and story and text every two seconds? And why am I stalking your cousin's sister's mom? And how do I just find out what school you went to, your date of birth, your favorite video game, basically your entire life history within an hour? And why am I getting butterflies by literally nothing? Oh damn, he wore Jordans. That's so hot. Oh my god, he wore a sweater. I wish you would drape it on me. His hands. Damn. Like, bro, he literally looks like Jian, but in your head, he's Sunyo. Come on, guys. Sunyo look decent, okay? Don't judge. Number six. Now, what the hell is the talking stage? Like, how do I know whether it will last, like, you know, one month or five months or ten years? Like, what is the right time to just end the talking stage? And what do you mean, what's my favorite color? Ask me my type. And what if the talking stage doesn't work out? Am I really supposed to go through all of it all over again? Number 7. You become delusional and really blind. Like, come on, we all know this. Okay, so my crush made eye contact with me for 5 whole seconds. He likes me for sure. Dude, so you know what happened today? My crush texted me and he wanted my English notes. My English notes. Don't you see? He wants to see my handwriting. He likes me. Today, during chemistry lab, he passed a test tube to me. It had his fingerprints on it. Basically, he wanted me to touch his hand indirectly. He watched my story. He liked my story. <laughs> he liked my post. Like, no, he doesn't like you. He's just being a normal person who does normal things. Number 8. Okay, now let's assume that the love part is cool, okay? But... What about the aftermath? You are in love for so long, you don't know what to do when the other person doesn't like you, so you continue loving them because that's kind of like become a part of your daily routine. Especially, you know, making imaginary scenarios with them. So you continue loving them while they continue not loving you, so you're basically like voluntarily giving yourself a heartbreak. Number 9. You become embarrassing. Hey, do you like someone? What? No. 
<laughs> no, no, I don't. Like, <laughs> how can I? <laughs> hey! Hi! What's the matter with you? Okay, so, so I just met my crush and... Oh my god. Okay, so I cannot breathe, okay? And I have this like really painful feeling, like sharp pain in my stomach. And, and oh my god, my chest feels so weird, like... And, and my, my, my legs are all wobbly and... I cannot, I cannot, I cannot think anything. I think those are symptoms of a heart attack. And then how can we forget the constantly trying to walk around a crush? Like, bro, where did you drop your self-respect? And then all of a sudden you're the Shakespeare of love. Whoever loved that love not at first sight. Doubt that the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move his eggs. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. <laughs> Number 10. You become dumb. You think too much while texting and still end up texting things that make no sense. I really want to go to Paris someday. Oh my god, yes, same. You know what? We can go together after college. What? What? Hey, I have a joke. Wanna hear? Yes, go ahead. The Easter Bunny was so upset. Uh, is this the joke? L let me just laugh. Um, I hadn't finished the joke yet. He was having a bad hair day. Oh, uh, I think my reaction got sent earlier. Okay, so now let's give a bonus point number 11 because like, why not? So number 11, there's this external source that's controlling you. Like, basically you're a puppet and your crush is the puppet master. Like, if he's sad, all of a sudden I become a therapist. If he's asking for notes, all of a sudden I'm racing to write it in the best handwriting possible. Like, bro, what are you even doing? But okay, guys, let's admit, there's one good thing that comes out of love or like, you know, heartbreak. You can finally relate to Taylor Swift songs. Final conclusion, don't fall in love. Like, just don't leave your home. Don't go out. Don't go on the internet. Just don't fall in love, period.